Every time I do a video on a laptop, it doesn't matter which one I'm doing, there's gonna be someone in the comments that's like, fuck you, Dave, laptop X sucks. You should buy a laptop Y. And when I do a video on laptop Y, there's someone else in the comments that's like, don't buy a laptop Y because it's terrible. It has issues, buy a laptop Z. So the truth is every single brand, every single laptop has the potential for some issues. And it doesn't mean that if you buy that brand or if you buy that laptop, every single device has those issues. It's they have the possibility of having some issues. So I'm gonna go through some of these laptops. These are some more popular thin and light ones. And I'm gonna talk about things that they're kind of known for, like problems that they're known for, so things to kind of look out for. And also I'll kind of get into how to get around those problems should you run into them. Okay, first up are the Dell XPS 13 devices. These are both the 2019 models, the black one and then the white one. These are very popular 13 inch laptops and they are known for coil wine. If you don't know what coil wine is, it is this high pitched sound that comes from these devices from electromagnetic activity. Like it's a, it's a current that's running through an electromagnetic coil and it can sometimes give off a sound. And for some people it's annoying, some people they don't mind it, and some people just straight up can't hear the sound depending on the frequency. But these devices are known for it. Now, I've gotten tons of review units of, of these devices over the years and I've actually had only one unit that had coil wine of like, I wanna say seven, eight units. So I don't know how frequently it occurs, but it is a thing. If you go on forums, if you go on Reddit, it is it is a thing. So if you get an XPS 13, that is something definitely to look out for. But aside from the coil wine issue, I don't think there's anything specific to the XPS 13 devices that are things to really look out for when you get one. Uh, next up is the Razer Blade Stealth. This is a device that, Aside from its price, very expensive, but its more common issue is the fact that the AC adapter can sometimes not power the device while it's being used heavily. So if you're playing a game, or if you're running something very heavy on the system, the AC adapter isn't strong enough to juice it up. It'll actually drain batteries while it's plugged in. Now, they tried to address it with a BIOS earlier this year, but from what I've seen, it doesn't, affect, it doesn't fix it for a lot of people. So that's something you wanna test when you get your system early on, just to see if you have it. But that's really all the, issues that I've really noticed with the Razer Blade Stealth. Uh, next up, Lenovo X1 Carbon. This is the 2018 model. They have a 2019 coming out relatively soon, which I'm stoked for, but this is a device that I did not review, and here's why. I like the X1 Carbon a lot. It's actually one of my favorite thin and light laptops, but there is a crazy amount of variation in this product. So I've received two review units, and I've seen two of these devices that my colleagues have purchased, and they're all different from each other. Like the finish is different between them and the keyboard. Lenovo's keyboards are some of the best in the business, maybe the best in the business, yet sometimes the keyboards have like differences in how they feel between the same model. So if you purchase one and you have what you think may be a bunk keyboard, get that resolved. Um, okay, next up, Huawei's Matebooks. So this is the Matebook 13. If you're deciding between a Matebook 13 and a Matebook Pro X, I recommend the 13 this year. The issue with these guys, uh, aside from their kind of shaky history with spyware and all that crap, they have some devices that are just really wobbly on the trackpad and other devices that are less so. But again, it's something you should look out for and should get resolved or replaced if you can right when you get the device. Uh, but aside from that trackpad issue, I feel like this is a pretty solid overall device when it comes to their hardware. Asus, I wouldn't say that there's anything that they're known for. If anything, these products, the issues that pop up with Asus devices tend to occur later on in the life of the laptop. They don't seem to happen right when you get the device, so it might be an issue with power delivery. But for the most part, these are, not that they're immune to issues, is that they just don't seem to pop up right in the beginning. That's a kind of a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. So the last is the MacBook. Uh, I've done a bunch of videos on these, but because they're so thin, they have issues with the keyboard this year, thermal issues, but the keyboard is the thing you're really looking out for. If you have issues with the keyboard right when you get the device, you should get that resolved as soon as you can. Surprisingly though, in terms of consistency, Apple has it the best. Like any of these other devices, it's kind of hit or miss. Like you might have something great, you might have a lemon and you'll have to deal with that. With Apple's products, you, you know what you're getting. They all have that risk of having the wonky keyboard. They all have the thermal limitations, but at least you're getting consistency right out of the box. Now, those are some specific issues that are more well known about these particular devices, but I wanna talk about some things that are more general, like when you get a device, things to look out for. 
The first one, kind of like the XPS device, is coil wind. It is something that can occur on any one of these. It's more prominent in the XPS 13 devices, but any one of these devices can have a coil wind issue where you're hearing that high pitched like mosquito sound. If you have that issue, get that resolved right when you get the device. And then I guess another thing to look out for is backlight bleed or any kind of like panel deficiencies. When you open up your screen in a very dark room and have a black wallpaper or some kind of black scene and crank up your brightness. And sometimes you'll see a glow around the edges of the screen. Now, a lot of these are IPS panels, so some degree of glow is normal, but if it's really pronounced, you should probably get that fixed uh, or replaced, repaired, whatever. But that's basically it. Coil wine and backlight bleed are probably the two biggest things I'd say to look out for when you get a brand new laptop. So in this video, I kind of referred to things like getting it resolved, getting it fixed. And this is kind of the takeaway that I'd like to leave with you guys. I think a lot of laptop companies are gonna hate me for saying this, but when it comes to buying a laptop, I highly recommend not buying directly from manufacturers. And the reason being, like the main advantage of buying from a manufacturer are well, two things. One is price. Sometimes you'll get a better price when you buy from directly from the manufacturer. But the other thing that they can do is you can get the device really early on in the product cycles. So like when it first comes out, you'll be able to buy it from the manufacturer first before you can buy it from Amazon or the Microsoft store or anywhere else. So that's kind of good. But when it comes to issues, like when you have a problem, getting it resolved through a manufacturer is always a little bit more difficult than getting it done through like Amazon or the Microsoft store or Costco or wherever else. The only exception to that I would say is the Apple store. They have a great return policy. Everybody else, you gotta fill out forms, jump through hoops, talk to representatives before you can get any kind of exchange or return going on. So if you're in the market and you're looking to buy one of these, I just, I really recommend Amazon, Microsoft store. I think you guys will thank me later because if something pops up, you can get it resolved a lot more readily. So this is why I think a lot of people think that every laptop sucks because every single one of these brands has the chance of having something go wrong. And when people experience something and they just see it firsthand, they get disappointed, it's really easy to have this opinion about a product that may or may not be true. But if you have a good return policy and you kind of look out for things when you first buy them, you can kind of avoid a lot of the issues. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.